The Comics Journal, often abbreviated TCJ, is an American magazine of news and criticism pertaining to comic books, comic strips and graphic novels. Known for its lengthy interviews with comic creators, pointed editorials and scathing reviews of the products of the mainstream comics industry, the magazine promotes the view that comics are a fine art meriting broader cultural respect, and thus should be evaluated with higher critical standards. History In 1976, Gary Groth and Michael Catron acquired the Nostalgia Journal, a small competitor of the newspaper adding the Buyer's Guide for Comics Fandom. At the time, Groth and Catron were already publishing Sounds Fine, a similarly formatted adzine for record collectors that they had started after producing Rock and Roll Expo 75, held during the July 4 weekend in 1975 in Washington, D.C. The publication was relaunched as the New Nostalgia Journal with issue number 27 July 1976, and with issue number 32 January 1977, it became the Comics Journal a quality publication for the serious comics fan." Issue number 37 December 1977 adopted a magazine format. With issue number 45 March 1979, the magazine moved to a monthly schedule, at that point it had a circulation of 10,000. In addition to lengthy interviews with comics industry figures, the journal has always published criticism—and received it in turn. Starting in the early 2000s, the journal published a series of annual specials combining its usual critical format with extended samples of comics from specially selected contributors. With issue number 300 November 2009, the Comics Journal ceased its semi-monthly print publication. TCJ shifted from an eight-times-a-year publishing schedule to a larger, more elaborate, semi-annual format supported by a new website. Topic. Lawsuits Over the years the journal has been involved in a handful of lawsuits. Artist Rich Buckler attempted legal action for a review that called him a plagiarist while printing his panels next to earlier and quite similar Jack Kirby art. A Groth interview with science fiction writer Harlan Ellison sparked a lawsuit by writer Michael Fleischer, over an informal discussion of Fleischer's work and temperament. Co-defendants Groth and Ellison won the case, but emerged from the suit estranged. Ellison later became a plaintiff against the Comics Journal, filing suit in part to enjoin the Comics Journal Library, The Writers, a 2006 Fantagraphics book that reprinted the Ellison interview, and which used a cover blurb calling Ellison a famous comics dilettante. That case was ultimately settled, with Fantagraphics agreeing to omit both the blurb and the interview from any future printings of the book, Ellison agreeing to post a Groth rebuttal statement on Ellison's webpage, and both sides agreeing to avoid future ad hominem attacks. The journal has on occasion published, as cover features, lengthy court transcripts of comics related civil suits. Notable instances include the Fleischer suit and Marv Wolfman's failed suit against Marvel Comics over ownership of the character Blade. Content The journal features critical essays, articles on comics history and lengthy interviews, conducted by Gary Groth and others. Noteworthy interviews include Gil Kane in number 38, Steve Gerber in number 41, Harlan Ellison in number 53, Dennis O'Neill in number 64, Robert Crumb in number 113, and Charles M. Schultz in number 200. The journal's combination of forthright news coverage and critical analysis, although the norm for traditional journalistic enterprises, was in sharp contrast to the affectionate and promotional methods of publications like Comics Buyer's Guide and later Wizard. In 1995, publisher Gary Groth joked that his magazine occupied a niche that nobody wants. <laughs> <laughs> Staff members and regular contributors Gary Groth has been the journal's publisher and nominal editor for almost all of its existence. Staff members and regular contributors have included Kim Thompson, Greg Stump, Eric Milliken, Eric Reynolds, Ng Suat Tong, R. Fury, R. C. 
Harvey, Kenneth Smith, Don Phelps, Robert Boyd, Tom Heintges, Michael Dean, Tom Spurgeon, Robert Rohde, Jean Phillips, Marilyn Bethke, Kat Uranwood, Heidi McDonald, Lee Wokner, Arne Saba, Ted White, Bob Levin, Carter Scholes, and Noah Berlatsky. Guest contributors have included Dave Sim and Trina Robbins. Topic: Managing Editors. 1987-1988, Tom Powers. 1988-1989, Greg S. Baston. 1989-1990, Robert Boyd. 1990, September 1991, Helena Harvelich. September 1991-1993, Frank M. Young 1993-September 1993, Carol Sibachinsky September 1993-September 1994, Scott Nybakken September 1994-1999, Tom Spurgeon also executive editor 1998-1999 1999-2001, Eric Evans and Darren Hick 2001-2002, Ann Elizabeth Moore 2002-2004, Milo George 2004-2006, Dirk Deppy 2006-2011, Michael Dean — last managing editor <laughs> Online editors Christy Valenti, 2010-2011 Dan Nadel and Tim Hodler, 2011, Tim Hodler and Tucker Stone, present The Journal's Top 100 Comics List The Journal published a 20th-century comics canon in its 210th issue February 1999. To compile the list, eight contributors and editors made eight separate top 100 or fewer than 100 for some lists of American works. These eight lists were then informally combined, and tweaked into an ordered list. Crazy Cat topped the list, followed by Peanuts, Pogo, and Art Spiegelman's Mouse. Harvey Kurtzman had the most entries of any creator, five, his original run on Mad number eight, his new trend. EC War Comics number 12 the 1959 Jungle Book graphic novel number 26 his Hey Look gag cartoons number 63 and the Goodman Beaver stories number 64 The Village Voice cited the survey's ad hoc criteria putting Bernard Krigstein and Al Feldstein's eight-page story Master Race Hal Foster's 34 years of work on Prince Valiant, Al Hirschfeld's theatrical caricatures, all the horror comics EC published in the first half of the 50s and Robert Crumb's sketchbooks in the same category suggests that they've cast their net a bit wide." Among the controversial omissions to the top 100 was Dave Sim's Cerebus series. Sim and the journal had periodically found themselves at odds in the years preceding the list's formulation. Issue number 213 included eight pages of responses to, and defenses of the list. Journal columnist R. Fiori wrote, Dave Sim must now think you have a personal vendetta against him. And co publisher Kim Thompson conceded, If I had to do it over again, I'd squash together the Hernandez material into two entries, and put Cerebus and two other things in the vacant spots. Twelve years later, the omission was still being acknowledged by the journal, which noted that Dave Sim's Cerebus was conspicuously excluded. Less surprisingly, given the magazine's long-standing editorial standards and preferences, the list was also light on the dominant genre of superhero comics. Editor and survey participant Tom Spurgeon wrote, I voted for most of the men in spandex titles that made the list, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Plastic Man, despite the sheer lousiness of some of those works' contributing elements." Ultimately, the top 100 included six superhero works, including the deconstructionist Watchmen. Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns was one well-regarded mainstream superhero project that was considered but ultimately not chosen, according to co-publisher Kim Thompson. Awards See also 
List of comics journal interview subjects Provides issue numbers with interview subjects Comic art Sekert organization Notes <laughs>